one of Ella's favorite singers was Billie Holiday, and she met Billie Holiday twice in person, once in San Francisco, and then later when Billie Holiday was not so well in Chicago in the 50s. And I think Ella was very attentive to the ways that the music business ate up mm -hmm. and discarded Black performers, perhaps particularly Black women. Especially performing. women, yeah. Yeah. And I think she was very attentive to that. And in a lot of interviews over the years, Ella would say something to the effect of, you know, children don't care what you look like, what color you are, how old you are, how fat you are or thin you are. You know, they're there if you are listening to them and if you're relating to them. Whereas that's true. And I also hear a trace in that of a sense that choosing to work with children was also choosing a career where she would have more agency more protection from some of those dangers of being chewed up <laughs> and discarded, and also more sustainable career. And in fact, that's true. I mean, mm -hmm. most women, even when they're popular nightclub performers or popular recording artists, you know, they're done by the time they're 35. So mm -hmm. she managed to have a career that lasted her whole life. I think it was a very smart choice. It wasn't inauthentic. She obviously cared about children, but it, it ended up serving many, many interests, I think. I Wonderful. think you're right. Yeah. I mean, I think it gave her longevity. Mm -hmm. and I, I think it's worth noting as we were talking about Ella meeting up with Moash and him kind of recognizing what she was doing as something that was rather ingenious. Ella really cornered the market on making music for children, and she was really the only option. She was the only person making music specifically for young people for decades. Folkways had releases. Pete Seeger made a great kids record. Mo Ash had asked Lead Belly to make a kids record. Woody Guthrie put out a couple EPs at Mo's request because Mo understood that with the baby boom happening, there was a market here for making music for children. But Ella is the person who really got it and embodied it. It wasn't a one-off for her. It's some, She saw a need and she saw that she could fill that need and she could be somebody who could deliver what she knew in a way that could be digested by children. And it's really not until the 1970s that other people, other musicians, the next generation, start realizing, oh, there's a market here. We can make music for kids and have a career doing this. But Ella was way out in front in that respect. Mm -hmm. The time that Ella is doing this work and that Mo Ash is a partner in pursuing and creating a children's market is also a time when basically early childhood education as a field is being right. invented. In the mid-60s, you see nursery school and kindergarten starting to be more popular. Preschool, what we think of now, what we call now preschool. Most children didn't go to preschool in the 50s, but by the mid-60s, for various reasons, including more women in the workplace, including Johnson's War on Poverty and the creation of programs like Head Start and people's realization of the relationship between robust early childhood education and outcomes for children, all of this is happening in the 1960s. And so all of a sudden, you have all these preschools opening and people being trained to work with three to eight-year-olds and thinking about that group's unique needs and they're also their abilities as human beings. And Ella, is her music is right there to fill that need. That's not even something that maybe Mo Ash or anyone else had anticipated how different now preschool, you know, the under, our understanding of preschool is important you know, really begins in the 60s. And so Ella is right there. Sorry to go on. I geek out about this, but it's really interesting. <laughs> it's yeah. really interesting to me that a lot of federal money goes into creating preschools as part of the war on poverty and huge amounts of federal money. Those professionals need material. And right. she not only gives the material, but she gives professionals who are not trained musicians keys to be able to use music in their classrooms without being trained musicians. And I think that's what's so, right. she's actually taken up more by early childhood educators than by quote unquote music educators, partly because music educators are coming out of largely music backgrounds. And so they are trained in a different repertoire. They're trained with kind of thinking about music as a set of skills that children can kind of acquire over time. 
And Ella's coming at it as someone who learned to play by ear. So she's less interested in using music to teach music per se. And call and response is ingenious because you don't need to be a quote unquote good singer or quote unquote trained musician. You don't even need to have a piano in your classroom. You can just have two sticks and you can still engage kids and you can still not only teach kids elements of music, but you do it without even telling them you're doing it, right? You double the meter, but you don't say we're doubling the meter. You just say, I'm going to play it this way now. And now I'm going to play it this way. Can you imitate me? So- And a teacher doesn't need to know technically what that's called, but you can still do it. That's incredibly impressive to me. It is. It is incredibly impressive. to. It should be incredibly impressive to everyone. 